welcome to the Fighting with Radio Waves podcast. This is episode number five. Today we're going to be talking about social engineering, cyborgs, and existential nihilism. If you're new to the podcast and this is your first time stopping in, podcast, I meant vlogcast, I do include a video with this. It generally has nothing to do with it, but um, yeah, I just like to include it. It's something to do. And uh, I like games, so might as well put some footage in there. Um, anyway, if this is your first time, thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe, I appreciate it. I think like 90% of you guys aren't subscribed that watch this. But um, nonetheless, I appreciate it anyway. The goal for the end of the month is 200 subs by the end of Spooktober, not this month. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be talking about social engineering, cyborgs, and existential nihilism. Social engineering is essentially just... Uh, well, manipulating people to give you what you want. And social engineering generally is used in hacking to get certain kinds of credentials. Cyborgs, well, surely to God, everyone knows what a fucking cyborg is. It's a human conv- like combined with a robot. And then existential nihilism is nihilism relating to existing. So uh, an existential nihilist would essentially say that like life has no meaning, do whatever you want. But uh, yeah, that's just the very basics of it. And if you're new to the podcast, I want to throw in that these are completely unscripted. I just pick three topics I like, and then I ad-lib it for an hour. Generally, it uh, seems to be something you guys like, because I do it every time. And it always generates views, and I get likes and comments. So I'm going to keep doing it. I I feel like there's too much stuff on YouTube that is scripted, and it's like... I feel like there's a new niche for people that wants that want less polished content, and I feel like you get that with um, well, with this. You just heard me sip a cup of coffee, but um, yeah, chill. You know, get yourself a drink, sit back, relax, sip on it, and um, you know, this is a vlogcast, so maybe if you're Maybe go fold some clothes or something, or doodle to this, or draw, or paint. Um, But yeah, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hope you guys are having a good one. Um, So yeah, back to it. Social engineering is basically a euphemism for uh, manipulation. But generally the word social engineering like applies to hacking, you know, specifically. Um, I haven't heard anyone use the word social engineering outside of like hacking spaces. Because I feel like most people would just call it manipulation. That's essentially what it is. It's just a euphemism. Same way someone might say, um, kicking the bucket when someone dies, as opposed to, um, well, they died. Or, um, let me think of another euphemism. Um, spearing the well, um, when, when talking about sex, that's another euphemism. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you get the, the idea. Social engineering is just a, a euphemism for manipulation. And then, like, an example of, like, social engineering could be, like, a phishing attack where, like, you know, you could get someone's email. And I'm, I'm talking about doing this legally, okay? Anytime I mention hacking or anything related to hacking, I'm talking about doing it legally. I'm not advising doing anything illegal. Um, yeah, not, not responsible for anything. But anyway... So, social engineering is manipulation, essentially. But with regards to hacking, um, a phishing attack is an example of a social engineering. So, like, if you were able to get someone's email, right, and you could, like, kind of, like, figure out their interest, and then you could create a fake email account and then email them about something like that, you know? And then um, you could maybe do something where um, there's, there's this tool called Apache, right? And it basically lets you create like a wireframe of like a website, and then you can put it on a server. And so this is, you can use this on Kali Linux. Um, but anyway, you can host something like that, right? And then you they, you get their email, and then you send them a DM or a, a message on like Gmail or whatever email on Gmail, and um, they would click it, and then go there, and then punch in their information, right? And then you'd have it, and then you could get access to all of their social media and really fuck up someone's life. So don't do that. that. That's bad. You didn't hear that here. Um, and it's also illegal. I am ta- Again, I'm talking about doing this legally. And in the instance of it being legal, you know, you might, uh, you might do that, but with a manager's password, right? 
So you could like gain access to a database. And then you'd, once you'd, you'd report back all your findings, like, hey, um, you need to train people to like double check their uh, emails, you know? And then like another example is like, someone could pretend to be an administrator, right? And then they send someone an email. They could pretend to be someone that works there. They're like, hey, I need it, it's urgent, right? And generally, people tend to listen to authority and confirm and conform, right? And and then uh, even more so when you're like, it's of the essence, right? Like, there's not very much time. So like, if you were to send an email that's like, "Hey, uh, I I need something quick. I need I need you to respond within like the next two hours. Um, I need your your email and your password, right? And then your like your phone number or whatever. Um, it's Jim with IT, you know, down here working on the database." And then they give you that information, right? And then you could log into the site and see shit that you're not supposed to see. That's just one example, you know? Um, but yeah, that's essentially all social social engineering is. It's just manipulating people. You can also do um, phishing attacks, which is just like phishing, but over voice. That's a little more complex. Um, Personally, I've never done any phishing attacks, and I'm not saying I've ever done any phishing attacks. I'm not gonna, no comment. Um, yeah. Um, don't do anything illegal. Always do capture the flags. That's the best way to do it. That's how I've learned everything. Um, and then just, you know, download a, a hypervisor, right? And if you don't know what a hypervisor is, it's something that allows you to run a, um, basically an operating system that isn't native to your host and host meaning like a computer. So an operating system, if you don't know what that is, is like, um, okay. So you have your computer, right? The hardware. And then the operating system is kind of like the middleman between the hardware and you. So it's everything basically. And then the operating system of the operating system can be considered the kernel. It's so like the kernel like is like the middleman between the operating system and the hardware. And then the middleman for the operating system and you is the is the uh or shit Jesus fucking Christ. The middleman between the hardware and you is the operating system. The middleman between the operating system and the hardware is the kernel. The kernel is like the bare bone basics of the operating system. So it's like the foundation of it, right? Like Kali Linux is um is a type, it's like a subtype of a, an operating system, right? And then it runs on the Linux kernel. And then it, that usually falls into the um, Debian and I think Ubuntu, like th those are the two. I, I might be confused about the Ubuntu, Ubuntu, that might be Ubuntu Linux. But um, anyway, this is just what an operating system is. So you wanna download a hypervisor, which again will let you um, run an operating system that's not native to your device and I would recommend downloading Kali Linux. It's not very user friendly, and you will be confused as all hell when you when you're first using it. If you've never experienced, if you've never messed around with the command line, especially so, because it's it is very command line heavy, as opposed to something like Windows, which is like almost not. But I don't think I've ever had to use the command line interface at one time when I used Windows and it was to um, basically do a trick where I didn't have to up update my software. I didn't have to like, I don't know if it's illegal to do or not, but I, I don't think Windows is gonna come beating on my door for $5. I just didn't feel like paying $5 to like renew my Windows license, right? That might be an exploit someone could use. Um, if you do, I will hunt you down and kill you. Um, <laughs> it's a joke, probably. Um, but anyway, like they're, they just kind of use the command line interface to like mess with shit um, to where I didn't have to pay it. That's that's an example. Like, and I feel like hacking is like when you say the word hacking, people assume like oh, that it's like an evil criminal. It's like no, it's it's not, and it's not always like you know manipulating things to uh, get things from people. Like you could consider that an example of hacking, right? Like finding an exploit on the internet that lets you like bypass getting a new key or something, right? So you don't have to when you get rid of a watermark that's annoying the hell out of you and you're not having to pay 10 or $15. You can just kind of bypass it. Um, you know, Bill Gates, if you're listening to this on the off chance, uh, I'm sorry, man, I just, 
I didn't feel like updating Windows. That's, that's, that's another reason to do Linux. It's free. And it's open source, you know? Windows was like, oh, you gotta update your Windows license. Fuck you. I don't want to. And then I pull up the fucking command line interface, and then bam, I, I can't remember how the fuck I did it. I, some guy on Reddit knows a lot more shit about this than I do. But I know enough to talk about it, and I uh, have light conversations, so that's where I'm at. I don't claim to be some, like, genius hacker, man. I've only really got into computers within the past year or two. But uh, when I get into something, I get really into it. And I will learn everything I can about the subject. I'm still learning about this subject, um, but I was earning a certificate. Funds started going short, so I had to cancel learning about the certificate. And then, um, well, now I got a new day job, and uh, I've got some new clients for some stuff. I also do, like... Designs, I've designed album covers, shirts, logos, uh, drawings, paintings, I've sold originals, prints. I'm essentially a jack of all trades. So, upside to ADHD, if you're also hard working, you can essentially become a polymath. And if you don't know what a polymath is, it means someone who is an expert in more than one area. Granted, I'm not an expert at cybersecurity or anything, but I am like a pretty damn good artist. I can also produce music, um, I have produced music, I can speak Spanish, I can skateboard, um, I can play the bass, I can program a little bit, um, I can code some. Programming and code are two different things, by the way. I'm sure if you're, like, really interested in the same things I am, you already know that, but, uh, yeah, two different things. Coding's like CSS, HTML, and then programming's like JavaScript, Python, uh, Rust, trying to think of some uh, C++, C, C Sharp, you know, shit like that. Um, but yeah, those are that's the difference between programming and coding. I didn't explain it, I just explained which. It's like programming uses like recursive functions, I think, and CSS and HTML doesn't. Recursive function means like it'll run a process and it'll jump back and then rerun the process, essentially. So it just keeps running the process as it goes on. I don't get why they just don't call it repetitive function, you know, or repeating function. I feel like that would make more sense rather than recursive, because I feel like it's a concept that, like... And it's not even really, like... I don't know if you can fully translate the concept of words. Like, you just kind of have to study your recursive function until you just understand it. I, I, like... And that's another thing, too, with, like, this shit, is there's always, like, a degree of humility, because, like, there's always a chance that you really do not fully understand a topic. And it's because, like, there is always something else you can learn. And I guess this is why it's another, like, cybersecurity. It seems like there's a lot of people with ADHD who are into this shit, and I feel like it's because it's so damn wide. Like, if you go off in one direction... Oh, 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 or, oh, what's, that's not a one direction, so, anyway, I was trying to make a meme, but, um, if you go off in one direction, right, you start learning, like, Python and shit, and then you get bored of Python, and you're like, hmm, Kali Linux, that's pretty cool, I want to play some Capture the Flags, and you learn how to, like, remote access shit, and, um, you know, run commands and all that cool shit, um, that's still useful. Like, you can still use both of those. those the, both of those help you. And then, like, you learn HTML and CSS, right? And that'll help you, like, analyze front-end stuff. And, um, the off chance someone put a password in, CH in the HTML. And then you learn something like Metasploit, which helps you find vulnerabilities on a website. And then, bam, you're starting to get dangerous, you know? Um, but with great power comes great responsibility, so... Do all of this shit legally, man. Don't get arrested. Don't do stupid shit. Um, don't go getting revenge on your enemies. It's not worth it. Just be more successful than they are. That's the best revenge. Ignore and work harder than they do. And ignore the small petty shit, right? Oftentimes, you know, it makes you look weak if it's like something really small. So just ignore it, you know, and work harder. Work harder than they're working and work smarter. And eventually, it, it won't even it won't it won't even make sense to care, right? So it's like ah, uh, they don't matter. They're not as important now. Um, but yeah, don't don't hack people unless you're being paid to do it legally. 
Um, yeah. Another topic that I'm going to do for a video later on is relating to the dark web. So just, just throwing that out there. Um, so that's, that's social engineering out of the way, right? My other topic was cyborgs. And like I said, none of this is scripted. So I hope you're not expecting me to go through like a bulleted list. That's not what this is. Be sure, I'm going to throw this in again. Be sure to subscribe if you're listening. Spooktober goal is 200. And if you like this blogcast so far, leave a like. I appreciate it. And um, let me know what you want to hear in another video. Comment. Let me know. Um, if, you think, if you think I'm doing good, let me know. If you think I'm doing bad, let me know. I can't really provide what you guys want to see if I don't know what it is, you know. Um, and also just, I like having conversations with the people that watch this stuff. I like discussing the shit I'm talking about, period. But, um, it's great when it, you know, it's on my channel and I'm always happy to reply to comments and I'm going to try my best to always do that. As long as I don't get like up into the hundreds and it's like, eh, I don't know if I can reply to all those. And I, pr I probably won't even reply to like, okay, I like criticism. I don't like... I like constructive criticism, but I don't like criticism that doesn't really, like, it's like there's, like, I don't like criticism that I can't use, you know? Someone's just like, you're a stupid bitch, right, in a comment. I can't use that, but if you said, hey, you're talking too loud, or hey, you're talking too quietly, or hey, this thumbnail looks awkward, or hey, um, you didn't really explain this super well, or hey, you went way too into detail about something. I can use that, and I don't get mad, because it's like, hmm, they had a valid point. Noted. Actually, you helped me, so thank you. But if someone just calls me a stupid bitch, I can't use that. I mean, can you do anything for that information? If someone called you a stupid bitch, right? If I said, hello, person watching this vlogcast, you are a stupid bitch. What would you do? You'd get mad at me, right? And you're like, well... Why? That's what I think. Like, when someone tells me a stupid bitch, it's like, why even get mad, right? Um, unless I have to, like, unless I'm, like, forced to defend my reputation. But, like, most of the time I just don't get, like, I don't personally give a shit. Because that doesn't hurt me, right? It's like, your opinion of me doesn't determine who I am. And another thing to ask yourself is, like, well, who is this person calling me a stupid bitch? How do I know they're not a stupid bitch, Right? Or if, like, someone makes fun of your weight, but they're also fat, what does their opinion matter, right? Or if someone really skinny and, like, makes fun of you for working out and getting in shape, what does their opinion matter? Or if someone who's, like, really bad at a skill you're good at has a comment that's negative and doesn't help you in any way whatsoever, what does it matter? Right, and another topic that I'm going to be discussing is stoicism, so that's kind of like some stoic wisdom. But that kind of, like, leads into existential nihilism, though, while I'm at it. Okay, if life has existential nihilism, right? I guess I'll start off with nihilism, which literally in English, like... Nihilism literally means nothingism, right? It means... Nothing. Literally, it means nothingism. Um, that I could explain that a little better. Um, so it's like... There is no objective truth, right, to reality. And if you peel back layers, everything is based off something else, right? It's like, okay, you shouldn't, um, this is like an extreme example. I'm just going to use the craziest fucking example I can think of to, like, really break it down. Obviously, it is morally wrong. Okay, I'm refuting myself already. Um... Trying to think of a more neutral statement so I don't sound fucking crazy. Um, you shouldn't eat potato chips because it will make you fat, right? Okay, then you could ask, why is it bad to be fat? Well, because it's unattractive, generally, in modern American culture, in most parts of the world, to most people. Okay, why is it unattractive? Well, because of evolutionary psych, you could argue with the evolutionary, from that evolutionary psychology perspective that um, 
it might imply that you're not a good mate, right? If you're not taking care of your body. And then you could argue like, well, where does evolutionary psychology come from? And it's like, well, you know, um, some psychologist in like the 1930s or something. And it's like, well, where did they get that from? And it's like Charles Darwin, you know, the concept of evolution. It's like, where did Charles Darwin get that from? Well, he was looking at birds over in like the Jalapagos Islands or whatever. You were on a ship or something, I can't remember. It's like, well, where did he get the idea from? And it's like, oh, he read it or he like came through it from listening, reading all these books. And it's like, okay, where did the people get the information that read all of these books? And then you keep, you keep pulling back, right? And then eventually you realize that it's always been subjective truths and there is no objective truth to the universe if you really keep peeling back layers. And from my understanding, that's essentially what existential nihilism means, right? There are no objective truths. And because of that, you are free to do whatever the hell you want, right? Um, so it's like, we are a grain of dust, and this is, might give you an uh, existential crisis. And then my advice to fix that would be meditate and do something legally that's all i'm gonna like that's all i can really say um but yeah like existential nihilism is basically nothing matters you know just putting it extremely short that's that's what it means and um yeah you could throw in moral nihilism but i don't i'm not discussing that i i would say i'm a pragmatist first and foremost and I try to put logic above all else, above my own emotions even. Um, even above the emotions of others, right? But I have principles. So it's like I hold myself to standards, but I also hold others to them, right? I won't steal, right? That, that's that's a principle of mine. I'm not a thief. Um, I try not to lie. I don't know who the hell doesn't lie on occasion. Um, but I try not to do it too much. For one, I feel like, you know, if you lie or if you lie too much... Um, people will catch on to it, right? And that'll eat up your reputation. And if you're trying to run a business, which I am, I run a business, that's not a good strategy, right? And another thing is like, I don't do shitty work. I work hard and I try to make, I do make good work. And, um, you know, I always try to put my best foot forward, but I'll also will call other people out and I also will call myself out. You know, I tried the whole straight edge thing for a while there. I think I did it for like a month, maybe a couple of weeks. I just, it was good for a while. I was in a rough spot and I think, so I have manic depression. I'm open about it. I was going through like a depressive cycle and I was getting really dependent on alcohol and nicotine, right? I don't smoke. I don't like to smoke. Smoking's gross. Um, no offense if you're a smoker, do what you want. Again, existential nihilism. We exist in a meaningless void, so, you know, if you want to give yourself lung cancer, go ahead. Your body, your choice, whatever the fuck, I don't care. Um, I don't want to see you get cancer, though, so maybe quit that. But uh, what what does my opinion mean? You know, I'm just a random YouTuber. You've probably never even seen my face if you haven't looked at my other videos. Feel free to do that, I appreciate it. Or put hate comments, like, oh, you fucking talking shit about me smoking cigarettes and blah 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 like i said reference the criticism thing i said i really don't care about criticism but there's nothing i can use you know and i just used a double negative i knew someone someone could have got me on that they could have said oh you big dumb bitch you're using double negatives you don't think you're not so smart do you <laughs> um but anyway yeah that was existential nihilism and uh, our final topic, I'm probably going to, um, to put it bluntly, I'm probably going to stretch this out a little more. So far, I've, I've talked 24 minutes. And like I said, um, these aren't scripted. You know, I, I put three topics and I just use my own brain. I sit back, relax, and sip coffee and talk. And I hope that's kind of what I'm trying to cultivate, right? It's like a conversation between me and you, the person watching this. So... Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's like I'm sending over radio waves a conversation. Because that's what the internet really is. That's why I call this fighting with radio waves. Because essentially what you're doing when you're hacking is you're 
you're fighting with radio waves. Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Those are the two um, frequencies that the internet runs on, as far as I know. And those are radio waves, technically. So that's why I call the blogcast Fighting with Radio Waves, because I try to tie in what I, what I talk about in every episode to something relating to hacking, or just really technology in general, because I have a passion for tech. My, my, I guess my three major interests in life are art, writing, and technology. I am fascinated by all three of those things. I love books. I love reading. Um, and I also love writing. I get a kick out of writing. It's one of my favorite things to do. So is making art. I love making art. Um, I love designing things for myself and others. I love getting paid to do it. That's always great. But uh, I'll do it without getting paid. Same with writing. Um, I also do the shit with, I do with computers without getting paid. But I've kind of thrown both art and um, hacking legally on the back burner. Because I've been focused on this book and finding a job. So... All I've really been doing recently is just like setting four hours to just sit down and fucking write and then draw the illustrations because it is an illustrated novel. Um, part of the drawing point for it, uh, for the people that follow me on Instagram, because originally they followed me for my art, but um, it's an illustrated novel and I'm not showing all of the illustrations in it on my Instagram. So like the only way you will be able to see some of the illustrations is to buy the book. And I'll probably be really um, peculiar about anyone posting pictures about the pictures found in the book on the internet. At least for the first year it's out. Uh, I'll like request that they delete it. Because it's like, hey man, I didn't spend three years writing this fucking novel for someone just to go and take pictures of it and put it on the internet. Um, and I'm going to say something and I'm going to make you delete it. So it's like, I didn't just do that so someone could pay ten dollars and then go take a picture of it and put it on the internet and it's like wow now there's no extra mystery i mean i've i think i've written a pretty damn good book so far i've got 175 pages um i've thrown in some concepts that i haven't seen in science fiction before i've seen variations of them but not this variation of it not from this angle that's all i'm going to say i feel like you would really enjoy it and it'll expand your thinking and make you think I also put in a lot of really good one-liners and soliloquies, and that's just like a monologue, basically. Well, I don't really know if it counts as a soliloquy, because it's not an opera, it's a third-person novel, um, uh, omnipotent, third-person, mostly. Um, but yeah, cyborgs. Cyborgs are uh, pretty prominent in the in this book. Um, some people in this future I've wrote have willingly underg undergone surgeries to uh, make themselves work faster on these factory lines, right? It's like essentially in this future all there is is manufacturing jobs and factory work because the middle class has essentially all but died outside of like a few, very few professions. Um, and those are like programmers and security guards. It's either you're broke as shit and you work in a factory or you own the factories, right? And it takes place 30 or 40 years after World War III. I'm, I'm, like, my plan is finish the rough draft, right? And then go back and fix the timeline and all the little potholes. And as, I've, as I'm writing it, I've got a notebook. And I'll just write down little plot holes and little things to fix. So after I finished it completely... The first rough draft, right? Because like, I've already got the very beginning and the end. I've got the entire plot laid out. I just got to get it out of my fucking skull onto the paper. You know? And so far I've done that with 175 pages. I'm past the halfway point of the novel. Um, I'd say I'm about 55 to 60% done, words-wise. Um, and then I've still got to draw a few things that I want to draw. And then i got to format the images into the document. It'll probably come out to about 250 pages when it's all said and done. But, um, cyborgs, you know. That's, like, going back to cyborgs, and that's kind of what led into the me talking about the book was cyborgs are more prominent in the future. Um, and all I'm going to say is virus. So, cyborgs and virus. Anyway, cyborgs, you know. 
what is a cyborg? Can you tell me what a cyborg is, person watching? I sure hope to God you can tell me what a cyborg is. Um, <laughs> a cyborg is a human mixed with a machine, essentially. That's, that's, that's like the bare bone. I don't know what, what the fuck else you would call a cyborg. You could argue just... Well, okay. Do you consider someone with a, like a prosthetic that isn't like super advanced a cyborg? What if it was made of wood? Would you consider them a cyborg? And that's like where the... I'm actually going to see what Wikipedia says. I feel like it's going to be more technical. Like, it's like you have to have, like, an advanced prosthetic to be a cyborg. And, like, multiple. Because I don't, I don't really know if it counts as a cyborg. If... Okay, yeah. Ah. Okay. So, it's, I was kind of wrong. Um, a fictional or hypothetical person whose physical abilities are extended beyond normal human limitations by mechanical elements built into the body. So it isn't a cyborg if you just have a prosthetic arm. It would make you a cyborg if the prosthetic arm gave you, like, extra abilities. And that's essentially what happens in this novel, right, that I'm writing. is like a bunch of people work in these factories and they've willingly undergone it, um, surgeries to make themselves faster, like robotic hands, right? that like allow them to like work extremely quickly because like this future is based off like how many parts you make per minute as opposed to you know your hourly rate right um and like a lot of people will just willingly undergo like these uh surgeries that's something i'll need to fix once i go back through in the, in the beginning or i'll have to change up because Certain aspects of that don't line up with the characters, because I only made only wrote one character to have a uh, a robotic arm, and I have to go back and like change some shit. Cause like I feel like it'd be kind of weird if they all three have robotic arms, right? But at the same time, that's the only thing I could really think that a factory worker would need, right? Other than like a mechanical better back or something from like all the hard ass labor, but I don't know if that counts. Um. But yeah, a cyborg is just like someone that has a special mechanical component that helps them, you know, do things faster. Um, person watching this, would you consider, you know, being a cyborg if the option was available? You know, you'd, you'd lose a piece of your, like, organic meat, but you'd gain extra abilities by way of having something mechanical added onto you. Um, me personally, I feel like it'd be kind of cool to have, like, a... Uh, an eye implant or something that lets me see like really far away or um robotic legs that make me run like super fucking fast that would be cool or like special legs that let me jump super high that'd be pretty cool um the only the only piece of uh cyborg technology i'd, I'd really be hesitant is having my right arm replaced or my right hand because i don't want to lose my artistic abilities right but more than anything, the one that would scare me would be a cerebral implant. I don't like the concept of Neuralink. I mean, you guys give me your opinion on it. Um, I'm sure some people are going to be like, What? You don't want Neuralink? Why not? And all I'm going to say is when the novel comes out and I'm writing, you should read it. But, um, I don't know. Like, anything with a network interface controller can be hacked essentially, theoretically. Um, and if that thing can connect to the internet, right? That me and I don't see how else it could get to the internet if it doesn't have a public IP, right? And a public IP is kind of like the shield between the, it's not even a shield, the wide area network and the local area network. Local area network being the Wi-Fi you're using, wide area network being the internet itself. So like, if there's seven devices, right, and they're in the same house, they all have the same public IP when they connect to the internet, right? And if you gain access to the local area network, you can theoretically jump onto the device that's connected to it. So once you get on the local area network, it, the, the uh, IPs become more individualized. So it's like it doesn't matter. Like, private IPs can have the same IPs. So it's like you would only see the private IP if you're in a local area network. 
Well, okay, you, they might be different. I'm assuming. But anyway, like, if you could gain access to the local area network, right? And then you could find... You, you could hack someone's fucking brain. And that's what scares me, right? What if you could hack a Neuralink? Because it's, it's connected to the internet. If it has an IP, you could hack it. And that's, like... Then what? Can you can you turn someone into a fucking serial killer? Can you give them schizophrenia? Can you give them bipolar disorder? Can you make them take a shit and eat it? I don't, it's like, there's all kinds of scary shit. You can make them rob a fucking bank and frame them. You know? You could, like, sec secure shell that bitch, which is like a command that lets you access a computer that's not yours. Um, or could be yours, but you're just accessing it remotely. Um, like, if it runs fucking Linux, right? And you should secure shell that bitch? Dude, that would be so fucking crazy. You'd, you'd be able to control a fucking human with another computer. And then there's like a, there's like a command, um... Hell, I got it wrote down somewhere. So I came up with this exploit, right? I haven't ran it on anyone, but... I call it a portal bomb. And the portal bomb would essentially be like, you pull up the command line, right? Anyway, okay, so there's a command called R desktop, right? And then in between brackets, it'd be R desktop and then the target's IP, right? The target's IP being the neural link. Okay, you would do that, right? That would allow you to remote desktop, which allows you to like see their graphical or command line inter. Well, it wouldn't be their command line interface. It'd be their desktop environment, right? You could like scroll around on there. Then you would pull up the command line, right? And then you would drop a fork bomb, which is essentially something that you've input into a command line, which makes the computer keep running processes until it crashes. What would that do to a fucking human, right? If you were able to hack a Neuralink device, run r slash desktop, would you see the inside of their fucking brain? And then, like, how would that, like... I'm just trying to consider... It's fascinating to me, like... What would happen if you could input a fork bomb into someone's brain? Would they? Would that just be an intrusive thought? But that—that's essentially what OCD is, right? It's like your brain has a fucking fork bomb in it, but you—you you can kind of make the fork bomb stop by like doing shit over and over again. Like, could you? You could literally. That, that'd be like, oh my god! It's just I don't know. Like I'm lost for words talking about this shit. It's fascinating to me. Like. Comment what you think. Um, that's what I'm afraid of, you know. But what I, I feel like if you're into hacking at all. Um, it makes you like, for one, it makes you like just skeptical and question everything. That's kind of like the basis of it. It's like anytime there, like the the three main questions to ask with with regards to hacking legally. Um. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that every time I say hacking, I'm going to say legally. But the three main questions of hacking legally are, uh, how does it work? What does it do? And uh, how do I break it? You know, how how can I make it, like, I'm trying to think of a, uh, an example for, like, a, okay, a website, right? Um, you know, you could look at it and be like, okay, it's got HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, and then some backend stuff. Oh, it, it runs SQL. Hmm. Okay. Let me think of some very... This is like a very common exploit that a lot of people have already like... If they have a modicum of an idea about cybersecurity, they will have made sure that an SQL injection attack cannot be ran with common payloads. Common payloads meaning like you insert a certain string of characters and it lets you bypass uh, logging in. Or it can just make you fucking crash shit or whatever. But one way to like get past logging in is using an SQL injection, right? And it stands for uh, server query locator language or server query language. One or the two. It it means the same fucking thing, but it, whichever way you you would you know make the acronym make sense. Um, but essentially, it lets you bypass it, right? Because it's like ah, they didn't they didn't like patch that, right? Right? And so you just run an SQL injection, and bam, you're in. So that's an example of like figuring out how it works, what it does. It's like, okay, if you were running a site that's like for accounting or some shit, right? And it's like, okay, it's, it helps me find uh, 
numbers for like hotels. Like, okay, this is an example. Like some a site like Trivago or some shit. Obviously not Trivago because they have enough money that like they've probably probably patched all that shit. I would hope. Um, I'm not about to go hack them. Like... Unless they hired me to do it, then I'd like that'd be fun as shit. Um, but it, but you know you could find out like what kind of back end shit are they using for uh, stuff that's like Excel, you know? Um, are they using SQL, you know, or for like just all it is is like it's essentially just asking questions from the from the database, as far as I understand. Um, and you're just kind of like inputting a character and the computer's like, hey, I don't know what the fuck this is. Come on through, you know. It's like you were to, um, it's like there was a gate, right? And then the gate was supposed to scan IDs to let you in. But then you just throw in a fucking crazy ass QR code that's never seen before. And it doesn't register it as an error because it can't tell if it's like valid information or not. It's like, okay, you're, it's an equation and it's asking for a number, but you threw an X. And they haven't, like, checked to see if you can bypass ship using, um, letters instead of numbers. So it's like, okay, I don't know if 3 is equal to X, so come on in, right? It's like, the question is, uh, any number greater than, I don't know, 13. And then you need put in X and they haven't programmed it to X so it doesn't give it like a yes or no answer and it just goes yes and you get in and then you can see juicy information that you're not supposed to see because you did some hacking legally um but but yeah that was somehow we we got to that from cyborgs um I don't I don't know if you've seen the other ones but like I've said, I got a pretty loose conversational flow. That's just how I talk, man. Um, I like other people that can talk like that. And this is why they're not scripted, right? I don't know what kind of podcast would be scripted. Vlogcast. Because, like, I throw in footage, but the footage doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. It's just there in the background. For one, I like fucking playing video games. Two, well, I... I just feel like that's more interesting than putting up a blank fucking, well, just blank shit, something boring. Like, so even if you do want to like sit and watch it with the video, the video is at least mildly entertaining, right? And this is long form content, so it's not really meant to necessarily sit for a whole fucking hour and watch a video with. But you can do it. Like I put in funny shit into the videos, and it seems like you guys like it when I make it really trippy. Because, like, when I've edited it to be kind of trippy and weird, you guys like it more. And also when I, like, throw in humor and shit. So, um, I'm going to keep doing that. You guys like it when I make it really trippy and weird. Um, and that, that was kind of the vibe I was going for at the very beginning was, like, I don't want to, like, this isn't, like, a drug channel. And I say drug, I don't consider drug is technically anything that like changes your like mental and physical attributes i guess um but this isn't like a channel about psychedelics but like i kind of want the videos to feel like a trip you know like it's a conversation it's a trip and a conversation when you access my videos that's how i want it to feel the the vlog cast videos i i know i do other shit like the fucking um the shorts and I get, I'll do like little book excerpts and all that shit. But, um, for the vlog cast, at least, you know, I want it to feel like it's, you're having a trip or it's like a trippy conversation, you know? And I want it to feel like an escape. Um, and also just like you're being transported to a different dimension or something, you know? And I want it to just stand out from all the other shit. On I don't know what happened. It cut me off. I think it's just because I put so many edits in this video. Um, be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate it. It's, I take a lot of time out of my day to make these. It's a lot of fun, but it feels great when more people subscribe. Um, which allows me to like keep doing it. But um, yeah, uh, subscribe and I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks.